Mini Test 3 Mini Talks Questions 1 to 3 Listen to the following radio talk. If you're too busy to brush your teeth after every meal and you sometimes forget to use dental floss, you'll be glad to know that in the near future you may be able to have healthier teeth thanks to microphages. What are microphages? They're tiny viruses that attack and destroy bacteria. Soon, they may be used to fight tooth decay if genetic engineers can develop a specialized type of phage to attack only those microbes that are harmful to the teeth. These microphages could be used in toothpaste or mouthwash. Once in the mouth, they would consume bacteria that breed on the surface of teeth. The advantage of microphages is that they are absolutely harmless to humans. They attack only one specific bacterium and have no known side effects. Number one. What is the main topic of this talk? Number two. According to the speaker, which of the following can be said about microphages? Number three. The use of microphages, as described by the speaker, depends on a development in which of the following fields? Questions 4 to 8. Listen to a talk given at an orientation session. Hi, everyone. My name is Beth Sinclair, and I'm Director of Campus Food Services. I'd like to join the previous speakers in welcoming you to Brooks College, and I want to give you some information on a very basic subject, staying well-fed while you're getting your education. Now, most of you will be purchasing meal tickets soon, if you haven't already. You should be aware that there are two plans available. Plan A, which is a little more expensive, allows you to have three meals a day, six days a week. With Plan B, you get two meals a day, your choice of breakfast and dinner or lunch and dinner. So once again, Plan A is three meals a day, except on Sunday, and Plan B, two meals. On Sunday evenings, everyone's on their own because all the dormitory cafeterias are closed. Food Services does operate some restaurants then, such as the Tiger's Lair over by the stadium or the Bengal Grill at the Student Center. But these restaurants don't take meal tickets. Of course, you can always eat at one of the restaurants near campus. Now, say you're living in Donahue Hall and you have a friend over in Cooper Village. Can you eat with your friend? Sure, because a meal ticket is good at any cafeteria on campus. Just remember to bring your student ID card as well as your meal ticket. Oh, and what if you have a friend living off campus who wants to eat with you one night? That's fine, too. One-time meal tickets are available at a very reasonable price. But remember, you may not sell or give your meal ticket to any other person. Just one last note about the food in the dorms. Some people have the idea that all dorm food is bland and tastes the same. That may even have been true here at Brooks College until a few years ago. But these days, we go out of our way to serve fresh, tasty, healthy food. We offer a great variety of dishes to choose from, including many international dishes. And you can always go back for seconds. So we're looking forward to seeing you at mealtimes and bring your appetite. Number four. According to the speaker, how are Plan A and Plan B different? Number five, which of the following is closed on Sunday evenings? Number six, which of the following must a student bring to meals in addition to a meal ticket?
Number 7. According to the speaker, which of the following is not permitted? Number 8. According to the speaker, how have the dormitory cafeterias changed in recent years? Questions 9 to 12. Listen to a talk given at a zoo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the city zoological garden's newest exhibit, World of Darkness. Not too many years ago, zoo visitors were unable to observe the behavior of nocturnal animals because these creatures are active during the night and generally sleep during the day when the zoo is open to visitors. But in the 1960s, zookeepers at the Bronx Zoo in New York City found a solution to this problem and developed the system that we now utilize in our exhibit. The animals' habitats are lit with white light at night. The animals think the white light is daylight, so of course they go to sleep. During the day, their habitats are lit with red light. The animals can barely detect this light, but the red light enables visitors to observe these animals going about their normal nocturnal activities. So, enjoy your visit to the world of darkness and enjoy observing these fascinating creatures of the night. And remember, next month is the grand opening of World Down Under, a new exhibit of Australian marsupials. Please join us for that event. Number 9. Who is the probable audience for this talk? Number 10. Which of the following does the speaker imply about nocturnal animals exhibited before the 1960s? Number 11. According to the speaker, why are red lights used to light nocturnal animals' habitats? Number 12. What will the audience for this talk probably do next? This is the end of the listening program for Part C.